So thank you. So clinical trials, if, if we kind of look at... so Yeah, there's, there's at least one big one coming. So the, the, the one that's published uh, from, from, from Jin MI's group um, is, is sort of the safety prelude mm -hmm. to the real study, which, uh, which hopefully will be out soon. Um, you know, he, every, every uh, NAD meeting I've been to, he gets grilled on when this study's coming out and he's smiling about the results and saying, we'll be interested, but it never can give us a date. So I hope that oh, will be very good. <laughs> okay. So I, I got a couple of questions. So one is, are you involved with any of the um, kind of NAD booster trials, either NR or NMN or any of them? Um, yeah, we've, we've got a few small ones um, going on. Not, nothing that's published yet, but. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, a couple of the you know proposal stage where we're just waiting on the NIH and, and a couple where we've uh, started to to give to small numbers of humans. <laughs> okay, so if you so suppose you had um, like unlimited budget and the FDA agreed, uh, what would what would trial in terms of trying to figure out the efficacy of NAD boosters? What trial would you want to do? Uh, I would I would do cognition in older adults. So there's, there's, you know, out of the different areas where there've been benefits in rodent models, one of them is, is Alzheimer's disease models, um, where there's now seven or eight studies that have all shown a, a pretty good cognitive benefit from, from boosting NAD levels. And there's not much um, in pro progress right now for testing cognitive function in humans. So that's one of the things we propose that we're, we're waiting on the score for the grant for that one. <laughs> um, but that's, that's what I'm most excited about and feel like it's, it's going to be the biggest gap. I mean, between the studies that are already published and the ones that are imminent, I think cognition is going to be the thing that is most exciting that hasn't been well covered yet. Right. Yes. Because you, you did mention earlier that NAD levels go down in the human brain or is it mouse brain? Maybe mouse brain. Human brain too. Human brain too. Right. And so do we know anything? Do we know why? That is because I assume, do we have do we have CD thirty eight in our brain? Um, yeah, so, so some of, some of the CD thirty eight positive cells can get into the brain as well. Um, um, so so that may be it. And uh, yeah, I mean it's it's pretty speculative at this point. These are data you know for, from MRI studies. So they're you know you get the concentration of NAD and not much other information. We can't uh, we can't biopsy the humans, <laughs> but um, not the certainly not the brain anyway. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, so it's, it's sort of the same situation as the rest of the body. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's some some evidence for decreased expression of, of biosynthetic enzymes with age, but um, we don't see decreased turnover. We see actually that turnover is about the same in the aged animals, and so it's probably uh, increased CD38 or increased PARP1 or, or one of these other NAD consumers that are much less studied. Right. So how does NAD get into the brain? Because you have the blood-brain barrier, is it just the same way it gets into any other cell? Yeah, so the nicotinamide can get across the blood-brain oh. barrier, um, and and so those cells are certainly turning over nicotinamide. Um, you know, this is another area where we've created a little controversy with the tracers because in our hands, the brain is unique that even if we give intravenous nicotinamide riboside or mononucleotide, we've only been able to see nicotinamide get into the brain. So, you know, so you actually, you know, inject these things directly in the bloodstream and now, you know, liver, kidney, muscle are all getting big doses of the molecule that you delivered because it's intravenous. Still the brain in our hands is getting only nicotinamide. So, so maybe these things don't cross the blood brain barrier, uh, at least the, the novel molecules, only the nicotinamide. But others have seen, uh, in particular Shin Amai, who's doing these NMN trials, you know, has, has given doses of NMN where he has seen NAD levels going up in the brain almost immediately, you know, and has argued that that suggests that there is direct transport there, which, so we're, we just, we have, I'd say contradictory results at the moment and uh, we'll see which one turns out to be right. <laughs> but uh, in our hands, we can't see those getting across the blood brain barrier. <laughs> Interesting. Right. Yeah. I mean, could you do that in, could you try that in vitreo? Just maybe not you would need like a, a human brain in vitro <laughs> i guess yeah exactly it's, it's a tough thing to model um, any kind of barrier is really tough to model in, in cultured cells because it, it just it just takes a tiny leak you know in, in vivo the, the barrier is tight and 
in the right. cell culture model, if you just have a little gap in one spot, you know, it's just extremely hard to get the cells to grow that perfectly, but you can model these types of things. <laughs> I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up buttons and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.